everyone. So what I've got here is a quick walkthrough of a uh, Minecraft version of Africville that I put together over one night. Uh, I should admit to you that it's really simple and uh, the walkthrough I'm going to show to you right now is missing one component that I built at school. Still, I hope to show you why I think this is particularly powerful, or at least potentially powerful. And I should say too that the inspiration for this came from um, a discussion that I had with some colleagues uh, who uh, were working on uh, the online version of CHC2D for the Ministry of Education uh, for Ontario. And when we were working on that course, we thought how great it would be to create a, a walkthrough, a 3D walkthrough of this community um, and allow our, the students taking the course to really explore it in, in a video game kind of scenario. Uh, so this is what I come up with. Uh, first, uh, students start out in this room and they learn that they are at the Canadian Museum of History and Time Travel, which, I don't know, sounds like a great place to work. I hope it happens someday. Um, they learn that uh, this room is restricted to time traveling historians. Here they'll simply pick up a quill and a book, uh, and I'm already holding that, that uh, book and quill, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, when they proceed through this room, they'll finally get to uh, the instructions. And uh, basically what they find out is that they live in the future, uh, that historians have identified a place called Africville, uh, but they don't know anything about it. And so the goal of the historians today is to travel back to Africville, uh, three different points in Africville's history, and to uncover the truth. And so I like the idea of the mystery here. The students don't really know anything other than the fact that there was a place called Africville. Um, so immediately students will click uh, the transport block and they will go to the first location. Uh, I should mention too that they will go in uh, reverse chronological order so they will actually go to the newest location first. So here is the Africville, Africville Museum. You'll note that we have uh, why it was built and when it was built. Uh, so students when we try this would use their um, their quill and book to track important bits of information. Now some chose to write it down uh, with traditional means of pen and paper instead, and that, that was absolutely fine, but they use this to track um, little bits of information. Uh, we also have the Bedford Basin here, and you'll note too that quickly, or obviously I, I built this reasonably quickly, uh, this is in one night, and uh, obviously there are not these large walls around what is now Africville, but that was, I used that to just to delineate a border, uh, so I wouldn't have to worry about populating the entire area. We also have a replica of the sundial that is in Africville. Um, and a copy of the inscription that's actually on that um, on that sundial. Uh, if we go over to this uh, build over here, we learn that this is um, a version of the bridge that crosses the basin, and we also know that we get the name of the bridge and when it was built. And although I am not a stickler for dates, it's really important to know the dates. Uh, for this investigation because I want students to note um, the links between them. So in the full version of this, when the students come back here, there's actually a third, uh, sorry, a middle um, period that they investigate, 1970, and when they arrive in Africa in 1970, it's essentially flat. There's a sign indicating that has been uh, the last uh, few locations have just been bulldozed by the city of Halifax, but that's essentially it. And so what I uh, found students making connections between those dates of uh, 1970 and the construction of that bridge. When they have investigated that level, uh, they go to the last level, which is the earliest, uh, the 1960s, and they'll note that the, the building, um, the museum looks to be, is here again, but now it's, it's something different. I, and I should admit to you too, that I did this quickly, and in the full version, uh, when I corrected at home, I, I gave this the proper name, the Seaview uh, Baptist Church. Um, and we, I've left an indication that some of the buildings have been destroyed, uh, bulldozed. Um, we also have, um, in some of the buildings, we have um, diary entries that I created. Um, based on facts, so that that's a true story, that a, um, a citizen who was in the hospital came home to find that his home had been bulldozed in his absence. Uh, and we also have some primary sources built into um, these locations. So for example, I believe if we go in here, 
Uh, now the textures aren't working here, so let me put those back on for you. Just give me one moment. I should have done that before, and I apologize. Let's put that on right now. There we go. And so even though they're not particularly clear, I did include um, some primary sources. A uh, little bit of information about uh, the men depicted here. Uh, we also have a primary source on the proclamation of Vice Admiral Sir Alexander Cochrane, um, identifying, uh, explaining how um, slaves escaping uh, the United States following, following uh, the War of 1812 would be uh, welcomed as free citizens. Um, and in the final version, which I completed at school, I've added a, I added a few more sources. Um, we also have, for example, um, the uh, the water pump, the infamous, uh, which uh, indicates the, uh, the, the the or uh, reflects the problem that uh, Africville uh, Africville citizens faced in that they could not get access to clean drinking water. We also have a um, a version of the dump um, with a description um, indicating what what uh, the dump may contain. Uh, now again, this is an incredibly simple design. Uh, I think it could certainly be a lot more detailed. And you can tell I clearly didn't spend a lot of time attempting to uh, make the houses uh, to depict the houses accurately. Uh, that being said, that wasn't really the point. My goal was to simply create something that would um, would allow students to investigate this issue, to try and um, use their understanding of primary sources to um, and sources in general to understand what may have happened here. And so this gave us a really op a really interesting opportunity to talk about. The relationship between these little pieces of evidence they, they found. And while I would love to cons construct a more uh, elaborate and more accurate version of Africville, I actually think this build uh, accomplished more or less what we needed it to. So um, I, if you have any questions about it, please let me know and I'm more than happy to share this, this with you.